Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Jody. Today we are going to look at how I tiled my fireplace and did a full makeover for under $40 and also include this DIY fireplace cover. So here is a close-up of the tile. You can see they're very thin and they are textured. I think that's actually pretty nice. I thought they'd be like flat flat but I guess that makes sense and I just love the design I think it's super cute there's blue okay so here's another close-up of our fireplace as you can say it's definitely not baby proof we're gonna start that project first so I just washed everything real good to see it is kind of rusted but it is older um, but I measured and I found this poster board that fits perfectly in this little space and I want to command strip it up here so it stays like this and just covers the fireplace up and keeps Aspen out of there um, because as I was cleaning this she started to get these little fake pebbles out. Um, our fireplace is non-functioning which is another reason why we're doing this. So. It doesn't matter to me um, that we cover it up. We just pretty much use it as a TV stand. Okay, so I'm just laying the tiles out just to get an idea of how the pattern will look onto the fireplace. And so far, I think it'll look really cute. I'm definitely going to have to buy another pack or two of these tiles before I can really start. So this is a little tutorial on how I measured and cut each piece. As you can see, I used my ruler to measure each piece. This was for the depth of that bottom row as you see above my head. And what you do is you score it multiple times with a box cutter or X-Acto knife. I bent it in half and then I cut down that seam. So I lined up the center of the diamond with the center of the fireplace. As you can see, I didn't cut the top row of tiles. They do overlap onto that black 
wrought iron section. And if you look a little closer, you can see it's very rusted at the top section anyways, so I don't mind covering it up. But if you wanted to trim them, I would trim them the same way I did the bottom row, where you would measure it, make a mark, line it up with a straight line, and then cut it that way. Like I can't just put it all the way to the edge because then they don't match up. It has to go right here. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to trace a stencil connecting each little groove, but it's going to be super hard to do. So then I was like, well, I don't have that special tool. What if I can just like push something to make the form and then trace the form? And um, my kids have Play-Doh, so we're going to try Play-Doh. So I molded it, right? Brought it over, traced it. So now we're gonna mold it again. And and when you mold it, I would always make sure you overlap slightly so you know that you are in the right direction. Okay, here I'm just comparing my pattern to the actual trim and seeing if I need to make any adjustments before I start cutting. Okay, so I traced it and I cut it out. This is just a scrap piece, but it does fit. It's not 100% close to the edge because there's grout, but I can move it over slightly once I put it on. It'll be like this piece, like that, on there, you know? It'll just, I'll move it from there to here and then in more. So let's do the rest of the easy pieces and we'll do those ones last. Okay, so this is probably the hardest part is trying to get it around this weird trim. So I traced it with the Play-Doh onto this scrap piece and I tested it out, right? So it fits and it looks okay. Um, so then I traced this onto the piece like that where it would lay. And now I'm just taking my box cutter and I'm just etching little pieces out at a time because you don't want to do too much and then fudge yourself over. So I've, I've caulked once, caulked, caulked once, and I'm real scared. I have water and a paper towel, which is what? The internet told me I needed. We're gonna start in a spot. Oh no. Uh, how did. Why did that happen? You're supposed to come out the tip. my life. How come I can't even cock? When in doubt, figure it out.
right, so this is the finished caulking. I don't want to say that anymore. It looks pretty good, clean, even around these little pieces that were real hard to do. So I will say that I'm pretty damn proud of myself for basically the first time I've ever done this with a faulty caulk gun. Alright, on to the next project. Mm -hmm.